Expressions can open up a whole new world in After Effects, and today I'm going to cover 10 I think are completely worth learning, so let's get to it. So first up we're going to talk about the Wiggle expression, which is one of the more simpler expressions within After Effects, but it has its uses, and I often use this for things floating around in space. So what I'm going to do is alt click on my stopwatch on the left, and we're going to type in Wiggle, and you'll see it pop up with the parentheses in a list there, and I'm just going to hit enter on that, and then it needs to input two numbers. So the first number is our frequency. So this is how often the object or the layer or the parameter is going to apply the wiggle effect over the course of a second. So I'm going to type in five so we can really see the effects of this. And then I'm going to put in comma. And the next one is the amplitude. And this is how much it's going to wiggle over the course of one second. So looking at this, we're going to have it wiggle five times over the course of a second while the position moves randomly over 100 pixels. So if we press that and press play, and you can just see it's wiggling randomly. Next up, I'm going to talk about the time expression. And this is a really cool one for animating rotation. This is what I use it for the most of the time. So again, we're going to alt click on the stopwatch and I'm going to type in time. And then we're just going to multiply this by putting a star in and I'm going to type 36. So what this means is every second on the timeline, this object will rotate 36 degrees. And if I just press play, this will just keep going forever and ever and ever. And obviously we can change this number so we can up this to 360 if we wanted a full rotation over the course of a second but you can multiply this with values and things like that so if we set a keyframe right here and we just spin this round to say 50 so then we do time times 5 plus value we can then see that this will then rotate and then the value and the keyframes will come into play and it'll go back to just timesing by 5 on the time there and again obviously you could just ease these as well and take that to the extreme you want to. Um, but basically it will just have its own time positions until it gets to this value and then it just will rotate around based on your keyframes. So next up we have something called posterize time which you may know there's the effect of posterize time right here and you can apply this to a layer and change your frame rate uh, based on animation. But this is a really cool way uh, and use of the posterize time in an expression. So what I'm going to do is in the rotation property, again, I'll click it on the stopwatch to open the expression box. I'm going to type in time and then times 36, just like we did before. So we get a bit of rotation. And then what I'm going to do is it's important to note that the posterize time must go above any other expression. So we're going to type in posterize time. And again, it comes up if you forget the expressions. And then I'm going to type in 12 and put a semicolon at the end. And now you'll see that this is posterized to 12 seconds. So it's basically almost animating on twos. Um, but the really cool thing is you might be wondering, well, why would I not apply that to an adjustment layer or to the layer itself? Well, what we can do is have properties independent. So if I then animate the position and we animate this just going across the screen and um, we'll just ease that really quick. So you'll have your rotation moving on the posterized time while your position moves at a normal pace. And obviously it's a bit fast, so we'll slow that down some more. But you can see that the posterize is working on its own and the position is still animating on the full set of 25 frames, which my composition is set to. So it's really cool and can produce some cool effects. If you don't want to apply posterized time to your whole comp or your whole layer, um, that would be the best kind of use case scenario in my opinion. Now, one of my favorite expressions in After Effects that I use a lot of the time, and if you're going to take any expression out of this, I would highly recommend you remember the loop out. It is one of the best expressions and probably my most used within After Effects. So it's a really simple one. And all I'm going to do is I'll click the stopwatch. I've just got a simple position uh, movement here. But say the clients come back and they want the ball to keep moving and the camera's moving with it and they wanted to extend the scene maybe a second or two. And I don't really want to go back and change all my animation to make this work. What I can do is if I like the speed of that, I can type in loop out with a capital O and parentheses. And then inside this, we can put quotation marks and then we get more options here. And I'm just going to discuss what each one does. So we have the continue, which is probably one of my favorite ones. And it's important to know that this won't work on eased keyframes on the end. And if we play this, uh, you'll notice that our ball will just continue moving at the pace uh, that we set it based on its other keyframes, which is pretty cool. Now we also have some other ones and, and feel free to uh, experiment with these yourself as well. We can use the ping pong one and this will send the ball back and forward to us, which is pretty cool. You can use it for a variety of things. Uh, again, depends kind of what animation you're going for, but it's a really nice little expression to use. 
and uh, we have cycle as well which will just kind of repeat the loop so just go back to the initial keyframes and then we have offset as well and that's the final one and that will offset our animation at the end so that uh, it will take into account the distance that this is traveling and then start again and just keep looping that over and over. The next expression I'm going to talk about is a, a math based one and there's actually two solutions to this. So say uh, you want to do a number counter in After Effects and you want this number to count up from let's say 0 to 50. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to add a slider control to this um, as a layer and we're going to expression our source text here and we're just going to pick whip that to the slider control. So then the slider control now uh, correlates to our number, so we can drag this up and drag this down. Now, the problem occurs uh, when we animate this. So say I add some keyframes here, number two seconds, I want this to count up to the number 50. Um, and then we start animating this, and we ease this, just bring up my keyframes and just add some easing to this so we can really see the problem that's happening. And you'll notice we get these numbers and they're not whole numbers they're not what we want we you know i want to see one through 50 zero through 50 not point however many decimals that is uh, what we can do is a really simple fix and all we have to do is go back to our source text expression where it's linked to the slider and type in math dot round and make sure that the slider control then goes in the parentheses instead and then it will completely make it whole numbers, which is a really cool thing, especially for doing counting numbers, uh, which might often be requested in infographics and things like that. Um, and it's a really cool workaround to creating an easy counter. Now, there is another way. Say you actually wanted some decimals and maybe you were doing monetary values. Um, I've got another layer here called value to fixed. And if I bring this down, it's the same setup. So I've linked this to a slider control. And then what I'm going to do in the source text property is type in dot value dot to fixed and it's capital F. And then in here we can put the amount of decimals we want to fix this to. So if I put two, it will then fix it to monitor values, which is pretty cool. And obviously we can change this. And if you didn't want any, you can have zero as well. So it's just two different ways you can add uh, rounded numbers or decimal numbers to counting text. Now the next one is a really cool function. It's what I call like opposite math. It's a really cool thing. So the example I've got is some cogs moving and I want this cog to turn with this cog so they interlink and act like actual cogs. So all I've done on this cog is I've set up a time expression. Now what I'm going to do is open my rotation on my pink cog, my second one, and I'm going to all click the stopwatch and then I'm just going to drag this to the rotation of the cog. And that means it'll just follow around. But that's not how cogs work. That's not right. I want the inverse of this, uh, but I don't want the keyframe and I don't want to type in the expression. So what I can do is at the end of my uh, parent, I can just type in times minus one. And this will then move and do the exact opposite of its parent, which is a really simple, cool expression. It's a really cool way to just do the opposite of your parented layer. Next up, I'm going to talk about the random expression. This is a really cool expression if you want some random movement or rotation, perhaps on your layer. So a quick, simple example is I've got the box layer here and I've just added a repeater and I want the rotations on each box to be slightly different across this line. Now, rather than trying to do this manually and kind of keyframing everything, I want it completely random. Now, what I can do is alt click my stopwatch and type in random. And you'll see it pop up with the parentheses and type in 60. And this will be the maximum value that these squares will rotate to. So they all have a different value between 0 and 60. Now, this does change on a frame by frame basis, which probably isn't what you want. And the easiest way I've found to get around this, if you want a static random rotation, is to go back to our old friend, posterized time. And we can put that in and type in 0 with our semicolon at the end and then we'll have a static hold instead. And of course, this has different uses. You don't have to just use a random on rotation. You can use it on many different values, like a lot of these expressions, but it's a really cool way to just add something random. I mean, you might want it on turbulent displays or something like that, rough and edges. So things are changing all the time, depending on the animation style or the look you're going for. Next up, I've got a really cool one that's from J. Akinest, who's the owner of Ordinary Folk, which I would highly recommend you check out. They have some awesome stuff and free resources available on their website. Uh, but it is maintained scale while parented. And this is a really cool one that can give some really nice effects, particularly when doing zoom transitions. So what I've got here is a simple scene I've set up. 
and I want to zoom into these circles for the next transition, but I don't like these pink circles zooming up with it. I kind of want to keep and maintain a space between them. Now, what we can do is use a maintain scale while parented expression. So on the scale, I'm going to all click the stopwatch, and I will put a link to this in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. I'm going to paste this maintain scale expression in. And to be honest, I I'm not really sure how some of this works, so I'm just going to paste that. Uh, but I'm going to copy this expression by going up to edit and copy expression only and just paste this to my other circles. And then you'll see what happens when we play this is the scale, the circles will then maintain their scale. So they don't actually get bigger on the outside and they kind of keep a nice distance, which is cool and it gives a different effect and it, it's really nice. It depends, of course, on the style you're going for, but I absolutely love that look and it just generates something different and looks really cool. A really cool one I recently found is a delay expression, which only works on parented objects. So what I've got here is a box going across my screen and it's just on a position and it just animates from one side to the other. I've then got multiple boxes here, which I've then parented to one another. So uh, box two is parented to my top box, three to two and four to three. So they all kind of go up and I don't want them to animate at the same time. Now I could unparent these and apply the keyframes to each one and then just offset them manually. However, there's a cool expression we can use and what I'm going to do is go to my position property and alt click the stopwatch as usual. I'm going to paste this in and the, it's setting our delay variable to two frames. So the, the value here is two frames. And again, I'll leave this in the description if you want to check out this sheet and I'll make a Google Doc or something like that or paste everything in the description. Um, and it's referencing the parented layer below and then applying our variable delay uh, based on the time and, and frames of time, which is a pretty cool, uh, kind of more complex expression. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this to my other layers as well. What happens is that every layer is delayed from its parent by two frames and it gives us really cool offset effect, which is really nice. And, uh, you know, it can be a bit of a pain if we want to change this, so we want to make it four frames and then it kind of, ah, yeah, that's really not actually, that might be too much. Let's change it back to three. Well, there's actually an easier way. And this brings me to my, to my final little expression and it is expression control. So what I've got here is that same delay expression comp set up here. Uh, but what I've done is I've made a null uh, and this is my control layer. And then I've put a slider control on this as well. Now, instead, what I've done is I've set up this expression to, uh, rather than having the number two on the VAR delay, I've pick whipped it to my slider control. Uh, so all this means this comp layer control effect slider is the slider control on the control layer. And this means I can then change this number and it will immediately update the delay. And it just saves, say we have more than 10 layers, 20 layers, it saves having to manually change each value each time you use an expression. And you can apply a slider control or a point control, whatever your favorite kind of expression control is, to anything you want. And if I just type in control, we have angle controls, checkboxes, uh, color, you, there's so many different ones and I encourage you to kind of play around with these and learn a bit more about them if you do want to get into the world of expressions. But you can apply uh, this kind of thing to anything. So, you know, I could apply rotation here and again, put time times and then pick whip my slider control. Make sure I have it selected. Pick whip that. And then I can change this value and it will rotate based on the slider control. And obviously the delay is going to be extreme, but um, really I would have that on a separate slider control, but just for demonstrative purposes, you can literally have a slider control, angle control, anything linked up to anything you want. And you can get really funky with expressions. If you want to know about my top five favorite free plugins, you can watch this video here. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.